Five times a day, this Australian soldier takes time to pray. Allahu Akbar. But his routine hasn't always been this strict. He led a typical civilian life before 9-11. Eight months after the Twin Towers fell, he enlisted in the army. A year later, he married an Indonesian woman and converted to Islam. Allahu Akbar. Over the years, it just became more and more important part of my life. Um, and sometimes my wife will joke about it a little bit, saying that I take it a little bit more seriously than she does. He doesn't want to be identified because he's still serving in the Defence Force and he's fearful he'll become a target for those with an extreme view of Islam. As he's discovered, some of those people serve alongside him in the Australian Army. The military has changed dramatically in the past, you know, 13 years, and it's definitely heading in the right direction. However, there's a few people holding it back. He's chosen to speak out about what he sees as the discrimination he's faced repeatedly because of his religion. The first instance was in 2008. My immediate supervisor told me that I would never be deployed or promoted because I'm a security risk because I was a Muslim. But he did deploy to Afghanistan in 2011 as a drone pilot, where he was immersed in the secretive world of military intelligence. A member of the 20th Surveillance and Target Acquisition Regiment, he spent hours monitoring coalition operations. He's been a member of that regiment since 2009. Sometimes we would see the aftermath of, say, an ID or the aftermath of um, troops in contact, for instance. And occasionally you would see um, people getting killed. He's a skilled operator of one of the most technical pieces of equipment we have in the Army. Two years ago, a soldier from his unit attacked Muslims as filthy, scum and worthless on Facebook. He reported the incident, and this, he says, made him deeply unpopular with certain members of the regiment. If they go overseas with that sort of attitude in, in a country where they are predominantly Muslim, then we're not really seeing a good example for ourselves. And we're, in fact, probably making targets of ourselves. Do you feel like an outsider? Absolutely, yeah. Because all I wanted to do was do my job. Last year, his commanding officer rejected his request to work flexible hours during Ramadan. He sought advice from an army chaplain. He then told me that, well, you better find another form of work then. And I uh, asked him, I said, are you serious? And he said, yes. Again, he reported the incident internally, but this time he was advised that he could be charged. In the inquiry that followed, his commanding officer wrote there was no evidence to substantiate the claim that his Ramadan leave request was mismanaged. He was accused of using a religious angle in his complaint and of being uncompromising in his expectations. His commanding officer went on to write that there was confusion on both sides and finally cleared the chaplain of unacceptable behaviour. It was a legitimate complaint. I hadn't just flown off the handle. I had um, definitely sought the um, right advice through the systems available within the military um, to see what they thought of it. And it clearly was not a misunderstanding between two people. Lawyer Brian Briggs believes the ADF will now have no choice but to investigate the matter further. Normally defence with their zero uh, tolerance policy will come down on this pretty quickly and I know that they will be investigating this because it's not a good look. The alleged harassment along with what he saw in Afghanistan have begun to take their toll. Our marriage has suffered from it um, and in turn my, my children have suffered from it. Um, you know, they've seen um, our relationship break down. Um, they've, my kids have seen me just withdraw from everything. 
They just don't know who I am. Despite the pressure her family is under, his wife wants to be identified. She's determined to support her husband. My husband really changed, really changed since I met before and now because he is like have, you know, uh, depression or something. Naval Captain Mona Shindy is one of just 102 permanent members in a defence force of 57,000 who are Muslim. She isn't surprised by the Facebook abuse. It's uh, not, a, not a very pleasant comment that's there. She says she's alarmed by the allegation involving the chaplain but won't comment about the case. She's a passionate advocate for a more diverse defence force. We also work very hard on uh, developing and, and uh, fostering a culture within the defence force that is inclusive, that celebrates diversity in people. Not long after Captain Shindy was appointed Islamic advisor to the Chief of Navy, the service introduced Islamic dress for female officers, halal meals and appointed the first Muslim chaplain. This soldier's future in the military faces great uncertainty. He now believes the army wants him out. In the meantime, he's trying to draw strength from his faith and family.